A lot of the time, you might want to share your Airtable database with your clients, but you don't want them to see everything that you have stored in your database. Instead, you just want your clients or your customers to see their information, and you might want to let them make changes to their data. Well, unfortunately, Airtable doesn't have an easy way to do this, but in this video, I'm going to be showing you a nice way that you can build a customer portal using one of my favorite tools, Stacker. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more, do check out the links that I'll include in the description below. We offer a free Airtable crash course to get you up to speed quickly with understanding how Airtable is different from spreadsheets. But without further ado, let's just jump into the heart of this video. We are talking about building a workable front end for your Airtable data. The first step that you'll need to crack before you can move on to actually building the portal itself is of course building the right structure in Airtable. Now in this example, I've built a very simple and straightforward two table solution. I have clients, five different clients here. You can see that I've included their name first and last and email and a little picture of them as well. And then I'm imagining that we are a consulting business because as it turns out, I know a little about this industry. And so in this particular case, we're linking to our clients on our consultations. So essentially assigning, you know, what client did we consult with at this date and time? What was the consultation date? You might also have an, a start and an end time, but I'm keeping it simple and I just put one date in here. And then I also created a receipt URL which for our case, I'm actually just linking to uh, a test you know, receipt that we did. So you can see that in this particular example, this is a Stripe receipt. You could, under normal circumstances, automate this so that you actually have a different receipt in each one. But for us, I just copied and pasted the same receipt, the same test receipt. And then also over here, I'm including a replay link. And so this link, the idea here would be that this is a link that goes to the consultation or a recording of the consultation. These are just some made up fields, of course, that I put into my data set. Your data set's gonna be completely separate. If you're doing e-commerce and you're selling things online, that would be a completely separate database. You know, whatever the different scenarios are for your business are completely unique. And this is the cool thing about Airtable because it allows you to build a data structure that supports your business rather than you trying to adopt a software that already has its guardrails on and maybe you don't run your business in the way that it works. So that's the fun thing about Airtable, just a quick side plug for Airtable. You know, it allows you to build whatever you need so that your business runs exactly how you want it to. So in this case, this is the sample data that I put in. Now that we're done with step one, we can go into our stacker. So in order to get here, just go to stacker.app. And if you don't have an account, you can sign up or start on the free version and get going. Once you're inside your apps, you can select create a new app. And then it asks you what your data source is. In this case, I'm going to say Airtable. And it's going to pop this up, going to ask us what we want to name it. This will just be an example, so I'm not going to be too particular, but just know that whatever you name it is also going to go into the domain name for your portal. So I might call this Airtable Demo. And it's giving me the automatic domain name Airtable Demo dot my stacker or my dot stacker dot app. And I say next step and it's going to create the app for me. All of this happens on the back end and we just have to be a little patient and here it goes. So we have to now have our user table ready. So note that the user table is going to be required for every single part of this. Now Stacker does say that you need a table to store with, uh, store the people who will log into the app with a column for their emails. These might be clients, customers, or partners. Don't worry, we won't send invitations to your users. The first time they hear about the app will be directly from you. So don't worry about it. Once you have that in place, which of course we already have in our clients table, once you have that in place, you can click I'm ready and we can get into the next step. Now we have to paste in our Airtable API key. If you don't know how to find it, you can follow Stacker's documentation here. They've put together all of this already, but in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and pop in and get mine. I will go into my account here 
open it up and my API key is right here. I'll copy this and paste it into my Stacker app. Now we are asked to provide our uh, link to our base. If you're not sure how to do this, you can follow the documentation that Stacker's put together here. But really quickly, what I'm going to do is go back to my base. I'm gonna click on share. And if I click on share the base, this particular part right here will create a shared base link. So I'll select this and say, yes, I would like a private read-only link and I can copy this link here. You have a few options, allow viewers to copy the data into their base, show apps added to the base, restrict access with a password, etc. These are all toggled off for me. Shouldn't make a difference for you, but just be aware that you have these different permissions here. Once I've copied that base link, I'll go back to Stacker and I will paste that in here and move on to the next step. Now we are all set. So we're, they are going to connect to our Airtable to set up the Stacker. It can take a couple of minutes for a large base. Ours shouldn't take that long because it's just some sample data that we put in there, but I'm gonna go ahead and click Start and let Stacker run in the background. It didn't take long at all, so I'm gonna click on Next Step here. And now we have to tell it where our users are. Our users live in our clients table. And you can see that Stacker already is talking to our Airtable base. It's saying, hey, uh, you know, I already know what your different tables are. You've got clients and you've got consultations. Which one has the data about your users? Of course, for us, that's our clients, right? We're building a user portal. And then it says what column contains your user's email address. And that's pretty straightforward. Again, we only have so many different fields in our base, right? Flipping back in, just as a reminder, we have a first name, a last name, a full name, an email, a picture, and a linked relationship. Well, Stacker knows it's not the picture and it's not the consultations, but it could be any of these fields here. And so those are the options before us, but of course, in our case, it's email. Select it, move on to next step. Then it says, which tables would you like to use with Stacker? And you can basically toggle on or off any tables. This is important to know because maybe you have a lot of information in your database that you don't want to share. Maybe you have income or expenses in there as well, or you know various other tables that you don't want your clients to have access to at all. Well, you can toggle off that entire uh, table just right from here. In this case though, I do want to connect. Obviously I have to connect to clients and I also want to connect to consultations. So I'm going to go on to my next step. This is where I can add personalization to my app. So if I want to bring in my logo, drop in my brand cover, uh, brand color, I can do that. Uh, in my case, I'm going to drop in and snag my logo real quick. I'll grab this, just drop it in and let's throw my color in here. And I can decide whether I want light or dark on my nav bar. Either way, whatever you prefer. So a little bit of customization, which is a really nice touch. And then that's it. I am now set up and I can go in here. So I've got a checklist here to move into. We've got a portal and a CRM. So they've put together a few videos for us that we can watch inside of them uh, and then set up my data permissions, etc. But if I'm flipping through here, you can see that I can already see here on my app that I've got clients and I've got consultations inside of this. So my user portal is already starting to look like something. So I can log in and see all of my clients right now. And I can log in and see all of the consultations that have occurred with those clients. Now, of course, this is not how I want to see this data, right? I want this to be a custom user portal so that my customers can log in and only see their data because I don't want George Jetson to see Yogi Bear's consultations or vice versa. So we need to go back into our setup and take care of that. Let's go ahead and drop back into our settings so that we can set this up appropriately. I click on the gear icon and, and go back to setup home. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down here to my different tables. And these of course are the tables that I have access to inside of my user portal. And I have the ability to change the settings the fields and the permissions. Well, in this particular case, I wanna add permissions so that only people who are logged in see their consultations. I don't want my users to see everyone's consultations. So I better assign some permissions to the consultations here. I can enable permissions and users can access only some records 
a record can be accessed by a user when the record is the client matches the user. Pretty straightforward, right? So I'm basically saying in order for somebody to see a record in the consultations table, it has to be assigned to them. Going back to our data structure, this is pretty straightforward. This is saying Fred Flintstone is only linked to these three records, so those are the only consultation records Fred will see. Of course, I don't want Fred to have access to everyone else's records. Now, similarly, I might also want to change the permissions of the client's table as well. So once this is all set, I can move back to setup, scroll down again, go into my client's permissions, and enable permissions here for my client's table. And again, I want to make sure that this is toggled on this way as well, that a user can only access the records that match them. So that's set up for my clients and verifying again that it's set up for my consultations and I'm all set. Now moving down a, la a layer deeper, records can be updated and created by these users as well. Maybe you don't want your users to be able to create new consultations from within the portal. So you would want to toggle this off. Or maybe you don't want your users to be able to change the data and update the records in the table. So you would toggle this off. You might also decide that you want your users to only see certain fields. So let me go back to my data set here. Maybe I don't want my client to see the client name because it's irrelevant. They're logged in and they know who they are. So I don't need to show that information. So if I were to pop back into my little app here, I can toggle off all fields and I can say, you don't need to see the client. So I just check that off. And so again, I'm able to get really granular here by determining what people can update and what people are able to create and or read. At every single field level, I have that control, which is a really big deal. Now, once I'm pretty happy with this, I can then drill into my layout. I can, you know, edit and update the way that this app feels within reason. You know, there's some guardrails here, but for the most part, I get a lot of flexibility. Now, once I am inside of the app, now going back into the app, I might want to impersonate a user to see what the app looks like from that user's perspective. So in order to do this, I'm gonna click on this, and I'm gonna drop down to impersonate users. And let's say I want to impersonate Fred Flintstone. I'm gonna go ahead and click on impersonate here. And this is what Fred is going to see when he logs into the app. He only sees himself, which is of course exactly what we expected. He can drill into this and he can see all of the consultations he's had, his email address, and he can change that information. So maybe he goes by freddy at example.com. Well, once he saves that, he makes that change. What do you think happens over here? Back in our database, instantly the email is updated. So this is a true sync between your portal and your backend database that lives in Airtable. Now, lastly, we, he might also want to flip into consultations. And as you would expect, Fred is only going to see the three consultations that he participated in. And this is a really cool use case because he can drill in. And if he wants to rewatch that consultation that he paid for and had back in February, he can click on that link and it's going to take him here. In this case, I just put uh, whatever YouTube video in there, but you can imagine that this was an actual consultation link or a Zoom recording or something like that. And then also he has access to that receipt URL, right? So he can click on that receipt and look at his receipt at any moment in time. So this is one of those things that's going to save you a ton of time on the back end. You know, you don't have to go through those customer service requests where people say, ah, can you send me that receipt again? Or, hey, can you share that link again? You know, Fred can just log into your user portal, see the data in your database that pertains to him. And as I said, you can make it so that he can change whatever you want him to change. So again, in this example, he can change or edit any of the information in this table, but maybe I don't want that to be the case. So I could turn editing off in my settings. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching and do let me know in the comments below how you use Stacker and how much time it has saved you in your business. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. 
We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly, and we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts, we have some online courses and a group coaching program, and for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon. Thank you.